Hello, this is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch and today we are doing a what looks like a complicated scene with a bright blue sky but we're going to pair this right back and make it uh, a focus on the sky and really how you can simplify these sort of mad looking scenes just by finding a few key lines. If you enjoy my videos please do like and subscribe because it's a huge help to my little channel. Um, I'll pop little dis in the description links uh, all the things I'm using, or most of them at least. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, always feel free to ask. So without further ado, let's get going. So this scene is a, a little village, really quite remarkable, sat on this big rock. Um, like I said, the focus is on, on the sky, so we're going to leave loads of this page to the sky. And then we're just going to start by sketching in the top, really. And I'm not bringing, you know, th this reference is, is huge. So if, on the link, you'll see how how big, how much village is going on below. But we're focusing on the sky. So we're kind of doing this upward looking view. And all I'm going to start by doing is following the horizon around and just adding in lines, which will help me remember, you know, these little details which were going on. And so this is this big house with this railing. And I'm just going to do this, you know, concept of doing a continuous line, just continually adding in these little details, keeping this horizon line going, or less horizon than just the top of the, the top of the village, just one single viewpoint and then one thing that we need to not get stuck on is getting it too correct so it's the concept of I think I think this is actually relatively correct amazingly but it's the concept of this this shape coming down this big sort of mountain of a village if that's not something which makes no sense at all um we're going to do the same on the other side and how am I how am I doing this so when I draw a line, I'm going, well, okay, we've got this roof and I can see the next one is lower. So we come down and then it's lower, but it's the same width. So I just focus on about the same width. And then this next roof, well, if I look at the front of it, the front sort of starts here, but there's a line coming down and meeting approximately in the one third along this roof. This roof is actually a bit higher than the highest roof. <laughs> so my bad for starting in the wrong place, but it's the same width again. And then I, I'm thinking, okay, where's this next one? This next roof is about level with that. So we come down, we do that. And it's all these just simple comparative bits of measuring. So I can see these little, uh, I've got what they're called, fence. It's the wrong word, but let's call it fence, barrier, posts. So they're about level with here. And then there's another roof coming along. And we've already got this this horizon sketched in. I mean, it's asymmetrical, but that could be quite nice. And what I didn't focus on was, imagine, you know, trying to squeeze everything in. I was just getting the shape in. And I knew that if I started at the top and came down one side, it's going to look fine, whatever happens. And if it doesn't, how long have we spent? Three minutes? Nothing lost, really. So what are we going to do next? Well, let's start getting a few of those little details in. What we can do is just build up coming down. So we've got a window. By that window, we've got another roof which comes across here. And in that roof, there's another window here. And above it, another window. Going to be a lot of me saying window today, I can feel. The sort of door. This roof actually comes in front of the other. And so we're just building up like that, building up detail and detail. There's another thing here. That comes down and comes across here as well. So all I'm going to do is just really slowly build in these little details. And I can guarantee I'm going to get lots wrong here. But only wrong in the sense of it's not exactly what's going on in the image. And that's fine. I could get something wrong, which I feel ruins the image. But, uh, you know... It's 
unlikely because if you're just doing gentle, delicate lines, you're not going to get stuck. You're not going to be, um, you know, able, unable to rescue a, a dodgy line or whatever. So now we need to just look. So this, you know, you can see. So I, I put these details in, and I can immediately find myself on the page. I can see this little window here, and again another roof coming across, and that roof comes all the way across to there. So just by having enough tiny details, I can work out what's going on, and I could find myself in the image, despite the fact of having to look up and down. And then just pick out some key details to guess get that kind of sense of what's going on. So for me it's these this big red house with another funky house behind it and things like that are just adding a bit of character. And there'll be lots wrong technically with the perspective of what I'm drawing because it's confusing lots of lines but again it, it doesn't matter it's just all about these little scratchy lines building up and you can see it already coming down the page building up a feel for the place. So we can go back to the top and just see that there's a little bit of shape missing, isn't there? So what can we add in? There's a, not a window there, but there should be a window in this one. So there we go. Now if we come across, there's some windows like this. And they are hidden behind more roofs, funnily enough. And see, so hopefully you can see how just by putting in these little details early, you can continually sort of cross-reference where you are and avoid getting lost. And then I'm going to just add this sort of bit of cliff face in. And if you see my channel, you've probably seen the way that I like to do cliffs. It's just with jagged lines suggesting something natural, but not something necessarily of nature. And we can add in these windows as well. And they're quite complicated windows if you wanted to go mad, go to town on them, but I'm just getting in the fact that there's a shape there, and that is all I want to do. And as you get further away, you can, they can get more scratchy and almost more sort of random shapes. And let's just build up to some of these interesting places. So we've got this coming down, and we've got a little triangular roof, which is nice to get in because it contrasts with a lot of what's going on. And then there's another roof coming up into it. And then there's this interesting circular roof. So let's get that in. And that kind of brings us down to the bottom, really. So that's the bottom of our page, nicely rounded out. Now, when you're doing these windows in the, in the round one, just sort of keep an eye on uh, you know what's what's going on in terms of perspective. So the further around here you get, the more angled upwards the roof has to be, and the further this way, the more it'll be angled sort of the way you expect it. And if you're in doubt, just use a pencil or or just go for it and just let go of it looking right. If you um, look carefully, you'll notice a few things wrong. So I've got this roof angle wrong. Um, but I covered it up by just pretending I could see the top of the roof and uh, I can't remember there's something in here which I got wrong but it's well <laughs> case in point I know there's something here where the perspective is pretty wrong but um, I've lost it because it's lost in all this noise going on and I'm just working sort of rhythmically rhythmically is the wrong word but working uh in a semi-structured way, just moving around the page, building up lines. As things are coming towards us, I suppose it's it's worth just sense checking as you do it. You know, these ones you should be able to see less of. These ones you should be able to see more of, and they should be bigger because they're closer to you. So it's just not necessarily living by those rules, but just being aware as you do it, just to gradually increase in size or just check that what you're drawing is making sense. 
got these sort of fascinating fronts coming down here. And what I find fascinating about them is they're the higgledy piggledy tops, if you like. And just get these ideas of shutters in. So we can do that with just some horizontal lines. And instantly, to me at least, my eye goes, ah, oh, look, there's shutters. And I, as you come forward as well, you can add in more of these other details because you'll be able to see them clearer because we're, we're significantly closer. Mostly, I think, closer because it's closer to our eye line rather than actually horizontally closer to us, if that makes sense, which it may well not again. <laughs> so let me just add the shape. So I've got this front here and uh, we should be able to see the side. So I know that the side's going to come down like that. And if I just look up, I can see that is correct. And then we can just add in some other depth here. And I mean, I'm basically hiding that I don't know what's going on here by adding in random lines. Um, but because the scene's so busy, it, it, it works. Again, feel free to disagree, but for me and for what I want to achieve today, it works just having random lines. I'll, I'll give an example. So here I could just literally draw some squiggles and they, they don't look out of place. And if you actually look close at them, sure. Um, but if you're not examining every inch of the uh, sketch, it looks fine. And the only person who tends to examine every inch of your sketch <laughs> is yourself. And so that's why we tend to be our harshest critics, because we're, we're too close to it, we're in it. Very hard to disengage ourselves from noticing when we've made mistakes. Now, what I'm going to do just before we finish, that was um, with a 0.3 Windsor Newton. I'm going to move to a 0.2 Micron, which I think is actually a bit bolder. And there you go, you can see it's bolder. So this um, shows the value of sort of knowing your pens. And what all I'm going to do here is just re-emphasize a few lines. So this pen's actually almost at the end of its life, so I'm having to scrub quite hard with it to get those lines. But that in itself, I was expecting, so I'm, I'm trying to use up this pen so that I can um, pass it on without to the other life <laughs> without feeling too guilty about throwing away a pen I could have used. But it gives you a different um, feel if you're having to really jab, push hard. Just gives you a more energetic feel, to me at least. It may be uh, one of those biases where I know what I'm doing and therefore I see it differently. But And there we go. So that is, a, is our little village pretty much done. Took about 12 minutes to get all these little scratchy lines in. Um, we haven't focused on getting everything in. We just took a, a starting point, worked out, and then filled in the gaps. Got focus of details. And then gradually as we get towards comp complicated or confusing places, we just let some of those details drop away. Now the sky, so the blue sky, you can see, oh, let's try that one again. So clearly got a little bit of fuzz on the bottom of my water, water pot. Let's try again. Fine, that's better. So there's a bit of, um, I, keep, I keep saying the last few videos I've done because I haven't cleaned this brush out properly yet, but um, I use this brush a lot for pastels. So there's obviously a lot of sediment in it. Um, and I really don't mind, for the same reason I don't mind having my palette a bit dirty. It, it adds an unexpected dimension. The uh, initial level of unexpected dimension was too much for me though. So that's why I washed it away, uh, or, or scrubbed it away with that tissue rather. The, um, it, does, it does go to show the value of painting with lots of water again, because the only reason I could get rid of that is because there's so much water there. Avoids anything staining. Now I'm going for this is a, this is like a primary blue. It's a it's a cobalt, 
um, and I think it's a, a great colour for this kind of sky. And now, just taking fairly rich pigment, and let's just get the idea of these shapes. You can see these sort of wispy shapes, like like um, you get from airplanes almost. And if we just touch this pigment in on that wet page, just watch how it spreads. And if we want to, we can we can apply a smoother wash in places. But as we come down, we want it to be more and more diffuse. You can see it's almost white as it hits the sea. And these pools of water just make it track around in really, to me, a really fascinating way. Now I'm going to just pick out some areas to make more intense. And this is going to be the boundary of those white areas. And you can see the shapes coming already all over. And I could just do the same at the top here. And you, with all the water, the pigment's going to flow both ways, but you can help direct it away from some of these white areas just by how you move your brush. Now, there's a lot of water at the bottom here, which is giving us lovely shapes, but it's probably too much because I do want some of this pigment to a, dry at some point and B, uh, I want it to settle a little bit. So let's just dry some of that off. That's just a normal tissue. And while everything's still wet, you'll find you can come in gently and just gradually, just with a really loose pigment, touch in those areas and as long as it's still wet and you're using a pigment which is similar in concentration to the pigment around it, you're going to manage to, um, you know, get a smoothish wash. I'm not after, you know, if I really wanted a smooth wash, you'd wash down from the top. I don't want a super smooth wash, I want something interesting. But I did want to fill in this area. Okay, now other things you can do are literally just ooh, get a little bit more pigment on there. It's not doing it for me. There we go. You can literally just tap. That'll get you some interesting shapes. And I'm just going to keep working. So now the next thing to do, I really I want to emphasize these these white areas. So I'm going to pop some really strong pigment in. And then I'm going to just make my tissue into a little bit of a paintbrush and just come in and just bring out again some of these areas and just you can get these textures depending on how you use the tissue you can get different textures which are like those wispy clouds coming through the sky at least to my eye they're like that and just keep gently working and maybe we want this blue to come a bit further down now that we've made everything up there more intense and maybe we even want to get this idea of a bit of warmth so a little bit of a yellowy brown could be washing up from the from the horizon just a little bit of something different in the sky and then what also can be really lovely in, in skies like this is a cauliflower so literally to get a cauliflower if we just add a bit more strong pigment somewhere a cauliflower will happen when you're adding weaker pigment to an area of strong pigment or if you add water so if i just take this brush which is clean and i just touch in there a bit more water you can see it spreading out and can you see that emerging already as a bit of a, a funky cauliflower? And then if I do the same here, and maybe we'll do some in this light area as well. It might not work as well because I think this pigment's already settled. But you can see it sort of spreading out, spreading out here. You can see that water flowing down and, and elongating some of those white shapes. And I think we've done a fairly good job there of, sort of getting that impression of a a fluffy blue sky with uh, sort of jet trails or whatever going through it. Again, I might just pull up a little bit more just to really exaggerate the, the trails. And then you can see this cauliflower is convincing. This one's probably a bit less convincing and maybe because I added the pigment so, so soon to it. But if I just 
touch in again. I, I I do quite like the idea of having one there. We'll see. And this is, this just shows you can't you can you can help generate them, but you can't control what happens. The opposite happens if you add a bit of dense pigment to uh, an area of light pigment. So if I just do it here, just subtly, you can see it spread out. And all that happens is when you pop water down, the same spreading happens, but it washes away the pigment. You can see it developing, and it's developing here now as well. So that's my way of getting textures and things in the in the sky. If you want to bring a, a sky to life just with movement, now, what else can we do here? So we've got this interesting village. I don't want it to take away from our sky. So let's focus on a couple of couple of colours in it. We've got a nice yellow, which we've already introduced. There's some oranges and reds. So it's a very warm sky. So in my little mix, I'll, I'll just get those three colours. And I'll start, you know, let's pick something which is yellow. This house is yellow. So let's just do that. And let that yellow wash down. Then I'm going to just lighten this sort of dullish red I've got in my pan with a little bit of um, Scarlet Lake. And then again, just looking for areas which are pink and which have a bit of tone. And then let those colours merge and settle together. Now, while things are still wet, I want to bring this sky right down. So I'm just going to move it. There we go. I just spotted a little bit of white space. Now, there's also nice oranges in there. And I've got a nice orange in here. I was going to mix, but actually, let's just try using this. This is transparent pyrrole orange. It's really lovely, actually. Uh, it's really sort of flat, but um, vibrant. And there you go. You can just bring it into a few places. And now we can just play with some of these colours. So let's get a bit more of this red, but make it the really bright red. I, I don't mind this coming up at all. And we just now we've got this idea, haven't we? Just these colours, these bright colours in this in this village. And the one thing I want to get in as well is this sort of area here which is um it's in the in the actual photo. It's a goldeny colour, but it's a area of rock and uh, looks like some sort of dry uh, plants. And I'm just going to emphasise it by taking away that colour. This can be our area, which is just like totally contrasting. And then when we've got this, so this is a mix of Indanfrone and Van Dyke brown. Um, which makes a very nice sort of you can see a sort of neutral blacky color maybe airing on the side of warm but we can use that and find where the shadows are in our in our village so going up here there's a load of shadow around this there's shadow we're just using these same colors just to again make make this village have a bit of shape Yeah, a bit of shadow in there. We can also make it up a bit. So, you know, once we've applied it, we can see where we, we've implied that the, the sun's coming down here. Everything sort of sitting on the other side is in shadow. So we can just start adding that concept in. I might touch a little bit of green in just to give here a bit of dimension. And there, I think that's, that is the first wash certainly done. So I'm going to really quickly dry that with my hairdryer. So apologies for the noise. And that's all that needs, a few seconds. So it's not totally dry by any means. And then I'm going to pick up just a little brush. And we're going to see how we can bring it to life a little bit more. Now, a few ways. And 
I'm going to target these windows quite a lot. Now a lot of them are a gorgeous orange, so let's get this pyrrole orange and a little bit more water and we'll just touch in these windows, simple as that. And suddenly there's these sort of glaring objects to look at. And we'll just keep this going like a few places. We don't have to look at exactly where the orange shutters are. We can just use our imagination at this point, really. And then, of course, there's uh, lots of black, dark windows. So let's get a really dense pigment and just bring those kind of windows out in a few places. Lots of these bigger ones are actually blocked out. And up here, especially these ones in, in the shadowy areas. And, uh, and then we can add some shadows under roofs and things like that using this really dark pigment. And then lastly, to bring everything together, just a little bit of this cobalt. Again, really intense. And that's where the light is just reflecting off these, these windows. Let's keep the nice blue. Okay. So suddenly just these few little touches brings it to life a bit. And I'm going to get a bit more of our, our dark mix. This is a really tiny brush actually. This is this came with the Artistry set um, that I was on about in a few posts a, a little while ago. And I'm going to be honest, it's not a very good brush, but um, when you're just touching little bits in like this, it shows what you can do when you're doing this kind of style. It's not about having a wonderful sable brush everywhere with you. It's about being able to just capture things you like in a way you like. Here I'm just moving, playing with that bit of green a bit more. So I, I quite like the green and it's where, where I put the yellow in the sky, it's turned a bit green as well. So we've got that kind of unifying idea. And I want to get a bit more shadow in a few places, just under some of these roofs. Just um, shows the eye that something's changed, that there's a a roof and then there's another one. It just it separates all these sort of individual splodges if you like. Okay. Now I think that's pretty much done if I'm honest. My thought is do we want to go back in with a with a pen again or do we leave it? Um let's have a let's have a little think and a play with the pen. Why not? I think there, there's plenty to be said about leaving this as it is, but uh, you know, sketching is all about experimenting and having a bit of fun. So let's see what happens if we just go back in and just gently, we can pull out a few more details and get a little bit more shape in a few places. Maybe we want to outline some of these blue roofs and make some of these shutters more of a feature and just things like that. And where we've where we've added the shadows and we can easily just go back in and sketch around them just bringing the shapes back together and just trying things out really and just stop look not too much yet so we can go back keep looking because you don't want to get to the point where you're gone yet ah, yeah that is way too much and i should have stopped a few minutes ago again just stop and look and I'm doing a lot of just these sort of random lines like I did over here, just finding where I can build in some texture and where I popped in these bright colours, I'm noticing as I circle around them, it, it's sort of capturing those colours, it, it is adding something, it is, it is making a, a difference, a positive difference in my mind. So I can you know, continue with that idea and then stop and have a look. And then let's get the same here, this little round structure. Maybe we can add in a couple of windows here as well. 
and there we go. Let's let's stop before too much is too much. So on the face of it, a ridiculously complicated scene, but with an interesting sky and uh, some lovely colours in the village. And so just by starting in the in the middle, having a clear idea that we're going to go for a big sky, not being too fixated on exactly what we're going to capture, and just working around systematically, picking out details, we managed to get a nice little village in with pretty expressive but interesting colours and plenty of shape. And then this sky, this big blue sky, which could have been a flat wash, but instead we've got, you can see our, our cauliflowers, we've got these sort of white jet trails that, that are in the sky, and it gets less and less intense as we get towards the sea, which we haven't included because it's underneath where we're looking. Anyway, I hope that has been interesting, enjoyable, maybe even helpful. Please do like and subscribe if, if you've enjoyed this video. And um, I try to, get, try to get back to any comments um, that people want to leave. So feel free to leave a comment or even find me on Instagram at Toby Urban Sketch and um, share anything you've done with me there. Thank you very much for watching and have a good rest of your day.